Hello, Scarlett. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you honoured that you are the first ever guest on the Be Found Be Chosen podcast? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to play it really cool, but yeah, secretly fangirling about being the first guest. So thank you for having me. It's good straight on your CV after this, isn't it? Hundred <laughs> percent headline in LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> no fair enough no I've, we've got you on to talk about um the new platform on the block which seems to be aero commerce yes yeah i thought we could start with can you give us just the the comic book story version like the bit of background about aero how it started yeah. why it's come about who's done it that kind of thing yeah of course so i think you know our founders matt and rich um, you know, well known within the e-commerce industry. Mm -hmm. um, they founded Aero a couple of years ago um, and it all came off the back of, you know, their experience in the industry, knowing retailers like the back of their hand and yeah. they've got so much knowledge of what works and what doesn't that they felt that they could really bring that to the table with a new platform. Okay. Like, yeah, I mean, Aero, it challenges the norm, um, you know, new kid on the block, but mm -hmm. it's been around for two years now. We've got some really brilliant retailers on board and yeah. We've got some really, really brilliant agencies using it as well. So yeah. we're just going from strength to strength at the minute. Yeah. So you've, what you've got on the website when you land on there, the, the kind of tagline is built for performance, made for retailers. Yep. So if we, let's pick that apart bit by bit. Let's start with the made for retailers. So who is it that's an aero commerce platform is perfect for? So mid-tier retailers is kind of our sweet spot, um, right. you know, anyone selling online with a clear strategy um you know we we can work for a lot of different industries but yeah e-commerce is our sweet spot and retailers is really really our sweet spot and um, you know okay. we've got to name a few in kind of like our local area we've got psych on yeah, the books sure. we've got yeah. wave direct you know two very different industries but both using the platform to really work for them online mm -hmm. um, yeah the two big local names as you say um yeah what made them go across or, or change the platform in the first instance? Probably a number of things. Um, I think they were both on two different platforms. So I think Psych were previously on Visual Soft, and I think that Wave were previously on Shopify, but don't quote me on that. Um, they are. Yeah. I've been on the site. I've looked at all the cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. My memory's proving me right there, so that's a good <laughs> start. Um, but yeah, I think it was a number of things. I mean... The first thing was probably speed, um, you know, legacy com platforms, not notorious for speed, whereas Aero is. Yeah. Um, okay. you know, we, we pride ourselves on it. And that's not something that a lot of, of platforms generally pride themselves on. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I think the extensibility of it was probably the second reason that for both of them moving across, you know, Aero is, is very easy to use and it's very easy to extend. So if, you know, you've got, you've got two very different retailers there, both with, you know, quite, specific requirements mm -hmm. and i think potentially you know outgrown their current solution or wanted something that was a little bit more nimble a little bit more lean okay kind of work with them um, and like complemented them online yeah so yeah you're right psych is someone they've got a lot of products a lot of SKUs. yeah there's a lot of catalog management going on in the background wave it's a different product they're inflatable hot tubs aren't they yeah yeah like the legion seller of inflatable hot tubs so yeah, totally different industries, but you know, you can imagine trying to get a platform to work for you and showcase those products in such a way. It has to it has to really, really complement you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Talk to me, Scarlett, about site speed. Like why why in general should a retailer care of how fast the site is? Yeah, it's an interesting type of conversation, site speed. And obviously it's something that we at Aero probably talk about until we're blue in the face. But um it's such a huge part of the customer journey. And I think it's sometimes something that goes a little bit by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's such an important part of the sales process and, and arguably the marketing process as well. Oh. You know, you can have the best marketing campaign in the world and, and be driving like shed loads of traffic to your site. But if your customer's getting there and it's slow and it's clunky and it's not easy to convert, they're just going to go and like abandon and go somewhere else. Like, I think you'll agree with me here, like customers, we're spoiled. We, the average consumer now is so spoiled. We, we want gratification. We want it instantly. And because we've been so spoiled, we don't have to wait. Yeah. It's, it's insane, isn't it? Like the, the human attention span is, I think there was a study. It's less than that of a goldfish now, but it's something like yeah. we'll wait five or six but, seconds at max. And then we'll go. Yeah, I think it's possibly even less than that now. Like, you know, if, if you've got a brilliant, 
campaign out saying like, oh, well, you know, remarketing products and all you need to do is go to the site, add it to the cart and check out. And it's taking you longer than 10 seconds to add it to the cart and check out. You're going to go somewhere else because you know that you can. Of course you are. And yeah, yeah, yeah the, the room for error there is so fine, as you say. Like yeah. the, the second I think this is taking too long, bang, I'm away. I'm back yeah. with the Google search results and I'm looking at one of your competitors' websites and I'm going to search, I'm going to shop from them exactly. instead. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, you know, you're totally right. And I think, I think all consumers probably fall into that unless, you know, you've got a really real loyal customer who, you know, will sit through hours wait time to just shop with a certain retailer, which mm. I think are few and far between these days. But yeah, I do, I do think site speed, you know, it's such an important part of the sales process that yeah. it probably isn't considered in the early stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, uh, for what guys like us do, and if we end up paying for a lot of traffic, the, the biggest benefit you see of a fast site is a lower bounce rate. Yeah. Because yeah. if we send hundreds of thousands of visitors to a particular site, but 50, 60, God yeah. forbid, 70 plus percent of them are bouncing straight <laughs> away. You know, yeah. our clients are going to be like, what are you doing? You're yeah, what are you doing wrong? And it's, it's, it's not the campaign's fault. It's the site's fault. Site speed, as you say. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things in there as well. So it's pretty well accepted that a faster site is a better converting site. And the more... Yeah money you can make from your existing traffic it's an absolute no-brainer um and you know site speed has been cited as a ranking factor for ages um in terms yeah. of seo and other kind of wider marketing aspects but that was something you wanted to touch on wasn't it like how aero plays into what retailers do in terms of the market and advertising yeah definitely i mean i think Obviously, you know, we're biased because we work in marketing and it's something mm. that, you know, we're, we're probably more aware of than than others, perhaps. Oh. But I do think that it is always an afterthought with platforms. You know, the platform's built and it's, you know, OK, it's, yeah, it's fast. It's it can do this. It can do that. It's it's built for, you know, performance and whatever. But marketing is never thought about in those early stages so you've got the platform you build the website and then you look at how the marketing fits around it and yeah. you know if it doesn't fit around it then it's kind of like oh well that's tough like you just have to work with it but I think what's obviously I'm biased and I know that but I think what is so brilliant about Aero is because of the experience that the founders had they built the platform with marketing in mind mm -hmm. so it, it's never been an afterthought you know there's there's so much that gets you know, missed out in the early stage, I think is probably the best way to put it. You know, I, retailers are probably thinking, right, well, can it do this? Can it do that? Like from a functionality point of view. Yeah. And then thinking, oh, great, I've got my shiny new website. Now, how can I market it? And it's like, oh, well, actually, my, my images don't do that. It, you know, the blog's not very easy to use and mm. SEO's not brilliant on it. Like, it's a constant uphill battle then if you're using a platform that's not thought about it. Yeah, it's not quite as we see with a lot of websites, it's not quite build it and they will come, is it? No, no, <laughs> not at all. You've got to build a site with with marketing in mind. If you're going to invite people into your house, how are they going to get there? Yeah, exactly. Are, yeah, nail on are, the head. Yeah, yeah. Are, the, are the roads clear? Can enough people park? You know, all that. Yeah, kind of definitely. That's such a good way of putting it. Um, yeah. So is, it's is that like, is that the headline thing about aero then you you're priding yourselves on site speed and that's your competitive edge i'd say site speed is probably up there with our competitive edge it's definitely you know one of the main things you know we pride ourselves on being lightning fast and yeah. i think i probably say lightning fast at least 100 times a week but um yeah lightning fast i'd say ease of use was probably up there and cost okay to, if i had to pick my top three best things about aero it would be cost easy to use and speed Without getting too technical, and we'll we'll go on to the other bits in a second, but how is it so fast? It's lean. It's um, I think probably the simplest way to put it. Like I'm not a technical person, so no, forgive I'm not me. Either. No, that, <laughs> that makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, I mean the the easiest answer is that it's lean. You okay. know, we haven't padded the core out with loads of junk that people don't need. You know, right. we. We pride ourselves on challenging retailers that, you know, we look at what they've got and, you know, if they've got a current site, like, do you, do you really need that, that feature or that integration just because mm. you've had it for, you know, two, five years or whatever, like what value is it actually bringing? Mm, and by okay. cutting out the rubbish, it allows us to keep our sites really lean, the core really like clean and efficient. And it just means they can run a lot faster. Nice. Okay. 
I really like that as an approach. It's almost quite fundamentalist, isn't it, isn't it in a way? Yeah, like, definitely, definitely. And I mean, there is a lot of technology behind the scenes that, the you know, a developer would be much better placed to talk about. You know, I know yeah, that we do a lot of stuff with optimizing images and um, we do a lot of stuff with Elasticsearch that I know speeds up. But hmm. yeah, a dev would definitely be a better place to talk about that. Okay. No, cool. It's um, it's interesting to see. Obviously, site speed is is a massive concern. Um, everyone wants things yesterday. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and especially with like, especially Facebook ads. Um, yeah. people are acting and purchasing on impulse. And if you do not have a fast site that can capture that impulse purchase, it's gone in yeah. the blink of an eye. So Absolutely. yeah, love it. Love it as an approach. Um, what about cost then? So you know, the way I see it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Your, you know, y- y- your side hustle kind of guy who's set up a little business on the side is going to lean to a platform like Shopify, for example. Potentially, yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, an arrow yeah. would be for someone who's probably been around the block a few times, got a lot of products in there. Yeah, I think so. I think you know, we we can we can support smaller retailers as much as we can support larger ones, but okay. I think you know, Sweet Spot is definitely somebody with a clear clear strategy and you know who knows what they want from the platform and knows the strengths of of the other platforms to really see the value in aero yeah okay yeah. how much does the platform cost or what does it start from or can you know okay so the way that we work is i think it's slightly different to the other platforms um yeah. which is quite a refreshing approach and um, so we're, we're based on a license fee um right. so as much as we're open source um we're open source by license agreement so you know Agencies that are partnered with us get access to the full source code once they've signed the license agreement and they're partnered with us. Mm. And then they don't pay anything until a site goes live. So they can not pay anything if a site never goes live. And all the time in the build up to it, they don't have to be paying anything. But the second it goes live, it's based off a license fee. Okay. And that's based off the monthly revenue of the retailer. So it goes up in sort of like price brackets starting at 50. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's based off the turnover of the retailer, but we have capped it. Um, we've capped it at a reasonable amount. So nobody will ever pay more than 500 pounds a month. And that's based on, I think it's 3 million pounds turnover. Um, they're all on our website, you know, totally transparent about the license fees. Um, mm-hmm. They're available on the agency's page and the retailer's page, I believe on the site. Um, but, you know, the reason we've capped it is that there's so many, many models out there and there's so many sort of fee structures in place that the better that you do, the more you pay. Yeah. And I understand the logic behind a lot of that. And, you know, ours to a certain extent does does cover that. You know, the larger the site is, the larger, you know, the functionality you're going to need and the features that you're going to need. So obviously you do have to take that into account. But we don't want to kind of thrive and, you know, take away that success from retailers. You know, we're not trying to capitalise on enterprise level retailers, you know or anybody else's success, you know, we've capped it at a reasonable amount. So nobody ever feels like they're kind of being taken advantage of. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, in our world as well. You see a lot of marketing agencies will do things like charge a percentage of revenue based on yeah. how, how well the website is performing. This, the whole business is performing at the end of the day. Yeah. But you know, that one sits, I'm uncomfortable with that one because there's a lot of work being done by the retailer to, find the products build an audience right, right, yeah. the whole bit before the google ads comes in or the google shopping comes in or whatever it might be that mm-hmm. you know we're just raking it in off the back of their hard work yeah exactly <laughs> it just, when you spell it out it seems unfair doesn't it and i think it, it is certainly food for thought for a lot of retailers but yeah. um yeah i mean that's one thing when it comes to cost i mean obviously our license fee is one thing mm-hmm. but the other thing that I think we're quite passionate about as well, or particularly on the marketing team, we are, um, you know, we do a lot of content and a lot of research into hidden costs. Um, there's a lot of sneaky little costs that can add up mm-hmm. with e-commerce yeah. platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you if you want a new website, you go into an agency 90% of the time or whatever percent of the time. If you want a new website and you're going down the agency route, you're genuinely going to look at, you know, what's my initial site build? And yeah. that's, you know, the first figure that you get and you think, yeah, okay, right, that's in budget or whatever, we can deal with that. And then next thing you know, you've got your host and your infrastructure costs. And that's another thing. I mean, granted with Shopify, I know that they're included in the fees, so you don't have to worry about it that much. But 
for the likes of Magento and Woo, you know, you, you can be looking at really hefty infrastructure and hosting costs. Yeah. You've got to pay for your plugins and any integrations that you need. Like hidden costs are a real, real problem in our industry mm. and they do burn a lot of retailers. Um, but, you know, fundamentally, if it's something that you need on, on your site, there's not a lot you can do about it. Sure, yeah. Kind of yeah. help the ransom out, yeah. There's, um, yeah. there's a few Shopify apps do that in a lot of ways. Like some of them are just the go-to option for a particular piece of functionality within Shopify. Yeah. Some of them can get expensive, especially if the traffic's quite a lot on the site. Yeah, you know, it definitely. becomes a, an extra chunk to pay each month, you know, so it's yeah. it's not insignificant. So, yeah. That, exactly. That's... If you hadn't thought about it, you know, that can be a problem. But, I mean, I suppose it's just... There's just questions to be asked, isn't there? I suppose like it's hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And everybody always suffers from it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot can be said for maybe taking a little bit more caution. Um, okay. I know that like personally, we get asked a lot, a lot, you know, what can your platform do? Like, can it do this and can it do that? And the best policy is just being honest. Mm -hmm. um, and fundamentally, there's nothing that our platform can't do. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll never find that a retailer's, you know, caught out with nowhere to go really um so yeah good stuff um yeah as you know f f i'm just thinking about the audience here so we'll be talking to a lot of kind of e-commerce managers or it might be the director of a, a smaller business yeah the more transparent the the fee structure can be like you know the less headaches they're going to have they don't want to see an invoice yeah. and think why is that so expensive and then it'll be a, a tiny little bit of small print or something like that yeah just, and especially if they're talking to a number of different people, whether it be agencies, uh, developers, whatever it might be, if there's a percentage of revenue fee going out there and a, a hidden agency cost there and everything else. Yeah, cost totally. you've got a while. yeah, and you've got a lot to answer for, you know, when <laughs> there's always somebody that you've got to explain these costs to. And it, if you, you know, you get caught out, it's kind of like, well, I didn't know about it, yeah. but it's not really my fault. And, you know, it's not a situation you really want anyone to be in. Honesty is the best policy, isn't it? Yeah, always. <laughs> um, okay, what, what about the ease of use element then? Because I think most people will be more used to, say, a WordPress in terms of the content yep. management system or, you know, Shopify is stupidly easy in terms of yep. product management and getting it out there. I've never been on an Aero site, hands up. I'd, I've not seen the back end of one at all. Yeah. It's, what's it like? Do you know what? I think probably the best way to put this is I've like proven that I'm not the most technical, but I can work my way around the error admin, which I think is really saying something. <laughs> like, yeah, it's um, it is super easy to use. I mean, it's you know, it's something that you know the founders have got experience with, and they know that how problematic having you know a clunky interface can be, or not having access to it can be really problematic as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've. I know that the team have worked really, really hard to make it easy to use. And okay. because the platform is so flexible and it can be morphed into whatever shape you want it to be and you can make it do whatever you want it to, it that just helps make it easier for people to use. Okay. So you, you can design the back end if necessary. Yeah, to, like you can, okay. yeah, absolutely. You can just make it whatever you want it to be. It is totally flexible. Yeah, okay. No, that, that's cool. So... How does it work then in terms of Aero exists as the platform, mm -hmm. but business owner will have a web development agency that also uses Aero? Yeah. There's a little bit of a triangle relationship going on. Yeah, kind right? of. It, mm, kind of, yeah. Like, so the way it kind of, it's probably more of a flow chart than a triangle. So there's Aero okay. at the top um, and we work directly with the agency and then right. the agency has a relationship with the retailer. We typically would never have a direct relationship with the retailer. It's always, we support the agency through that relationship. Right, okay. So yeah. Would there ever be a case where you talk to a retailer direct? What if, uh, I'm just thinking if there's a, the house is on fire and there's something drastically wrong with my- Oh my gosh, house. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's been, obviously, you know, we get um, a number of retailers coming to us directly saying, we want an aero site, where do we get one? And I suppose, the way we would always say we don't work directly with the retailer mm -hmm. just to kind of make it clear that we don't build the sites um, yes. just to kind of make the clear differentiation between we provide the platform and the agency builds the site mm -hmm. but we of course do have a commitment to the retailer you know for example if one inquires through the website 
we go through like we call it a discovery process internally so you know we'll take a look at their current site we'll work out you know what they need what they don't need and really sort of flesh out the spec um, and then we'll once we've got all that information and we've really like got to know the retailer we'll then pass that retailer onto one of our agencies and it's not like we just knock on their door and go oh here's here's a retailer like crack on and build a site mm -hmm. we do make sure that we nurture that relationship and you know the support that we offer to our agencies in my opinion is second to none mm -hmm. there's you know they would never be left in the cold um so we're quite comfortable passing our retail leads onto our agencies because we only work with a select few they've they've all been trained they've been on tech days they've got the support there and as much as we don't have the direct relationship with the retailer we know that they're always going to be looked after okay of course so yeah just back the cost then just for a second there will be obviously be the, the regular web development agency fee and the license licensing fee with Aero. Yeah. But that's no different to any other platform that I guess. No, no. Yeah, so. And yeah, I think obviously the infrastructure and the hosting, you know, I think it will be fair to say that ours will be significantly lower purely because of the speed yeah. and the leanness. Um, you know, if we've not bulked the platform out and the site out with loads of unnecessary stuff, you're naturally you're not gonna have to pay as much for the infrastructure nice. and the hosting. Okay, cool. What about yeah. if someone had, say, an in-house web developer? Um yeah. in, they'd never been on the aero platform before and is it a steep learning curve could that person pick it up pretty yeah, quickly definitely i do believe obviously don't quote me on this but i do believe that we have had in-house developers working you know obviously we say we work with the agency but you know we're not going to exclude those retailers that don't work with agencies because you know they've got the same resource in-house mm -hmm. so that obviously is similar to working with an agency but yeah i mean the way that it kind of it typically works to give you some context is you know we'd have the initial conversation with the agency or the developer or whoever it was or the retailer. And then whoever the developers are going to be that is developing the site, they come on a tech day right, and okay. get nice. them totally trained up on the platform. And they spend a couple of hours with our head of platform. He shows you like how to get started with it, hand over the platform, and then they get access to our Slack channel where they can like chat directly with us. And um, mm. so they're never like waiting for, you know, email response or a ticketing system or call back in 24 hours. Um, they've got the docs online um, mm -hmm. and they've got an account manager that looks after them as well. So it would be the same process for like an in-house developer that it would be for an agency. Nice. Like it. Um, yeah. You've got to be quick with the comms these days, don't you? We can't be waiting for stuck in the mud um, bits and bobs that might slow things down. Can we? That's uh, it's 2021 <laughs> no, no. and there's no room for that anymore. So music to my ears. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's been really well received, to be honest. And again, you know, yeah. no, we can't take any credit other than our founders. You know, they've they've been there and done that and they know what yeah. works and they know what doesn't. And waiting for responses for more than a couple of hours is it, it just isn't ideal. It doesn't work yeah. for anyone. No, good stuff. Right. <laughs> no, that's great. Right, Scarlett, let's pretend someone's listening to this and thinking, you know what, I like the sound of this arrow. Yeah. Um, which is your favorite site that Aero have done so far? So they can maybe go and check it out and click through. Such a good one. That's such a good question. Favorite Give site. Give two I mean, or three if you want. <laughs> let me, I'm going to con consult my entire list because as much as we've got case studies on the website, we have got like a whole list. I want to say instinctively, I want to say site, but purely because, you know, from Teesside, Teesside brand, you know, yeah. personally, it's it's lovely to work for a company, you know, that has the privilege of looking after that for them. Mm. Um, Ramsden's is probably another one off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure we've got a case study up for that one, but I'm not sure. Yep. Um, love Ramsden's. Um, again, Middlesbrough brand, Middlesbrough based, um, brilliant company and lovely site. Mm -hmm. And then third, probably Wave, yeah. Probably Wave Direct. Um, I like the Wave site. Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably biased towards that one as well. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to pick three, gosh. Yeah, um, I'll tell you another one I, I like was the, I was, obviously I've only got your case studies to go off, but the, yeah. Mashu, the Mashulu website. Mashulu one, yeah, it's a nice site, isn't it? Lely Kelly's good as well. Yes, um, it was the, I was quite impressed because I don't know if this is a new thing, but as soon as you land on there, they had a custom integration of shop by size yes which i yeah. thought was really cool like what why isn't every shoe re retailer doing that like i, I i've got size nine feet i don't want to see any <laughs> other shoe on this website 
where you haven't yeah. got it in stock or I can't buy it immediately. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the agency that built that tech city, you know, they do some really cool stuff with their sites. They're very mm. forward thinking. They're always thinking of ways that they can, you know, help the retailer out and sort of do cool stuff like that. So it's nice that it gets noticed. Yeah. Have you got any other examples of cool integrations that have gone on or is there... Uh... Is that really putting you on the spot? <laughs> That's really putting me on the spot, especially for a non-dev. Yeah, of course. Gracious me. It's just, well, the, the Mishulu one for, for me is like being on the outside and, you know, you've said you're not a technical person either. Yeah. That's one where it's, you're just making the experience for the customer 10 times better with just uh -huh. a little bit of thought. Yeah. On the example there, I might see a pair of shoes I love but I've spent a lot of time on the website getting there from home page to category page to product page. And if yeah. I get all the way to the product page and there's my size of shoe isn't in stock at that point, I've just wasted all the time and I'm suddenly really pissed off. But yeah, absolutely. Save, save me all the heartache up front. So I, I just thought that was a good <laughs> yeah. Actually. Yeah. That was a really good one. Um, another one I liked as well was there seems to be a lot of flexibility around payment gateways and, and also as an extension the checkout option yeah um, how do you feel about like you know the importance of an easy checkout is you got any cool quips on that <laughs> super important and i think yeah. probably the easiest way to sort of handle this one is you know we've made it as seamless as possible for for retailers you know we know how important that process is doesn't need to be any more than that you know arguably the most important part uh, yeah, you know if that's not good they're not going to convert you know your site can be as fast as anything but if your checkout page isn't good then you know you're still going to lose that sale yeah uh, we're also you know so one thing i've probably not mentioned on here yet is our, the importance of our partners mm. uh, especially payment integrations you know we're we're partnered with some really fantastic payment providers um, mm -hmm. and we're all about challenging what retailers have and making sure that they've got the right solution and um, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution you know everyone's a case-by-case -case basis and by partnering with so many leaders in that industry we can really make sure that you know we're offering the best of the best definitely no it's it's important if you if you check out rubbish you might have done all the hard work and getting someone who's relevant ready to buy to yeah. that site and lose them at the final hurdle so yeah total sickener yeah <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> No, Scarlett, that was awesome. Thanks for, for coming on and talking to me for a bit. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been lovely. Where can people go to see more about Aero and, and check you out? And so kind of thing? follow us on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, we're always active on LinkedIn, posting loads of brilliant content on there. Um, loads of um, engaging stuff on LinkedIn. So yeah, make sure you follow us on there and then head over to our website, um, Aero Commerce, if you want to find out any more. Legend. Cool. Thank you, Scarlett. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon.